my go-to wheat berries for Kolivas, Bob's Red Mill. Um, I've used this packet quite a few times. But you can see, these are what they look like dried. I soak them for about an hour and then I boil them. Actually, these I steamed in my rice cooker. I steamed them for 20 minutes. One cup of dried berries with two cups of water. I steamed them for 20 minutes in the rice cooker and they turned out beautiful. They're supposed to be nice and, and squishy. Um, but you can see they basically double in size. You can't see it too well. They double in size and um, they're nice and tender. So you can also boil them. Um, they take anywhere from a half an hour to 40 minutes to boil. Um, if you do boil them, you can add a cinnamon stick, which is very nice. And then once they are cooked, either uh, steamed in the rice cooker or boiled in a pot, you lay them in basically a single layer. You drain them first, of course, and then you lay them out to dry. So you want these to be really dry. Because they're, they're boiled or they're steamed, they, they retain a lot of water. So we want them to be nice and dry for our kaliva. So that's kind of where we are right here. They're just about dry. I'm gonna leave them maybe another hour or so. They've already been out for about three hours. So I think then they'll be fine. In addition to the wheat berries, which are still drying, I like to add uh, sultanas or golden raisins. And these are just, of course, they're just dried raisins. You can't really see them too well. There they go. Um, and I put about a cup of them in some warm water just to kind of plump them up a little bit, give them a little, resuscitate them a little bit. Um, it'll make them nicer in your koliva. I also use chopped walnuts. Um, these are actually already nicely chopped. I might make them a tiny bit smaller because you don't really want any chunky pieces in your um, koliva. I personally do not like that. But um, I use walnuts and then I use either, this is just regular baking cinnamon, nothing special, or this is something I got at, if you're local to the Boston area, Curio Spices in Cambridge has this candy spice. It's actually a combination of a bunch of different spices. If you can see here, it's coriander, um, ginger, fennel, star anise, fenugreek, black pepper, which is really, it's just a tiny bit, but just enough to make it interesting. Um, cloves and mace, cardamom, it's a whole bunch of great spices. This is totally optional. I happen to like it. Normally, I do just use cinnamon, but I happen to have just this really kind of basic cinnamon today and not totally psyched on it, so I think I'm going to go with my candy spice. Also, my last thing, and I have to cut this in a little bit, is this perfect pomegranate. I bought it a few weeks ago and left it on the windowsill. And as you can see, it's absolutely fantastic. It is ripe and ready to go. The, uh, I can't know what this part here is, um, is very crispy and hard. The, she uh, the shell of the pomegranate, the skin, is really closely on top of the, has dried right on top of the seeds. You can see the seeds. When I cut this open in a little bit, these seeds are gonna be beautiful. So this is basically everything um, that I'm going to put in my koliva when I'm ready. These are the raisins, all plumped up and squishy and soft. They're delicious. Um, they're gonna go into the koliva, which is dried now. I put, I already mixed in the walnut pieces. And I wanted to say earlier, I, I do normally and traditionally, uh, parsley is added as well. Uh, as kind of a bitter herb, but I don't have any parsley on hand and I'm really kind of upset about that, but that is the way it is this time. I lost a few here. Um, but these, the golden raisins from Trader Joe's are really tasty too, very sweet. So these are gonna go in as well. I'm gonna crack open my pomegranate now. I'll actually list, uh, I'll link a YouTube video I have on how to clean them, which I think is great, um, very helpful. So here we are, I'm gonna add in the pomegranates now. Are the pomegranate seeds that I just peeled? Peeled the pomegranate. As you can see, they're absolutely beautiful. They're very juicy and lovely. I'm gonna dry them off a little bit, actually. And this paper towel I had for the koliva, I'm gonna dry them off just a little bit before I put them in. Um, they're very juicy, obviously, so they're not. You don't want to dry them, dry them, but you just want to. This is about a cup and a half, a cup and three quarters gonna dry them off a little bit, some of that little juice off. And then they're gonna go into our koliva. I'm actually gonna save, save some of them for decorating if I choose to use them. If I don't choose to use them for decorating, I'm gonna eat them. <laughs> oh, also, you wanna pull off any little white pieces like you just saw there. Like you can see here, let me get that one. Come here, come off. these into the koliva over here. 
In we go. Beautiful. In we go. Mix these up. So we have in here the golden raisins, the chopped walnuts, pomegranate seeds. If I had it, I would put parsley in as well, chopped parsley. Get this all mixed around. And I'm going to add my spices. And you can use cinnamon. You don't have to use any spice at all, actually. I'm going to use this candy spice from Curio Spices in Cambridge. Spice, the candy spice, which is a whole bunch of things, and cinnamon. And there it is there from Curio Spices. I'm going to add that right in. Stir that in really well. I just uh, put my mixed koliba into this dish. This is what I'm going to bring tomorrow. This holds about three cups. Now, it's not my favorite dish for koliba. I have a beautiful crystal one with little feet. I left it at church last time, so um, I just realized that now. So I put about three cups. I wouldn't want to have any more than three cups. Usually around two cups is best for a All Soul Saturday because there will be so many um, other people's kolibas there as well. So, you know, the, the church does not need 50,000 cups of koliba. This is a good size. This is the biggest size I would use, about three cups. Um, that left us probably a cup and a half for ourselves. And then we'll eat those. At, of course, it won't be blessed, but still very delicious. Um, and at this point now, I just, with the back of my spoon, gently kind of pressed. As you can see, I didn't go right up to the... Oops, come on, Raisin. I didn't go right up to the top of the dish. I hate this right... Okay. Uh, I didn't go right up to the top of the dish. It has a little rim, this dish, and I'm actually going to leave it here because it's going to allow me to build up over this with the uh, toasted almond flour or graham cracker crumbs, whichever. I have both. Um, you can use either. And then on top of that, of course, the powdered sugar and then your decoration. So it's good to have a little bit of space here, especially if you're going to be traveling with this. If this needs to be, you know, taken to church, it needs to move around, it needs to be pretty stable. So last night I did... Uh, I crushed some graham cracker crumbs, um, just regular graham crackers. I didn't have the honey made, I just had the regular. I crushed it down to really fine powder, so you can either use these. Um, I know people who use the Nilla wafers um, crushed up, they'll use those. Very finely crushed though, as you can see this is really finely crushed. Or, excuse me, you can use toasted almond flour, which is a little bit more traditional. People use toasted uh, wheat flour, so just all, all purpose flour or toasted almond flour, which I think is nicer. It has a little bit of a nutty, a nuttiness that kind of matches the wheat berries and the walnuts in here. So um, I don't usually use toasted white flour. But um, so if you know, almond flour comes um, when it's the fine ground, so not the, not the natural kind. So again, it's a Bob's Red Mill product that I use. Comes in a very blanched white, and so this is toasted to a nice golden brown. I think today I may use the graham cracker crumbs and leave this for another recipe, but you can use either. Um, very easy to toast the almond flour, just be very careful on very low heat, you just have to be patient um, to get this nice color and not burn it. They're both just about enough, I'd say it's about a cup, um, this is a little more than a cup, just to go over the top and I'm gonna do that now. This is my koliva, the three cups of koliva in the bowl, completely covered with my very finely ground uh, graham cracker crumbs. I used a little over half a cup to cover this, and then I just again use the back of my spoon to gently pat it down. You want a pretty smooth, it doesn't have to be perfect. This is kind of like the crumb coat, let's say, on a cake. It's the undercoat nobody's gonna see. This is actually here to be a barrier for moisture between your koliva and your powdered sugar on the top. There needs to be something in between to stop the powdered sugar from just melting into your koliba. So that's where we are here. Um, I used, yeah, I say about a little over half a cup. So I'll have about half a cup and I can save this, put it back in the bag and have that for next time. Um, I, again, uh, to, to pat it down, I really just use the back of a large spoon. It does a good job. And so here we are. And this is kind of what I'm going to stick with until tomorrow night, Friday night, when I actually do the decorating. And then I will put the powdered sugar on and the, um, the Jordan almonds and that kind of thing. Um, some pomegranates that I have left as well, I think. I'm not sure. So um, let me just go and get my Koliva supply box and show you what we're going to work with tomorrow. This box of excitement is my Koliva supply box. It's actually also 
my Vussy Lepida supply box. So excuse the confusion, but this is my favorite fine mesh sieve for uh, dusting my powdered sugar. It's a very fine mesh. It's kind of a little bit old. It's a little bit raggedy, but it is still my favorite. It gives you nice control over a large service. This is my go-to for using the confectionery sugar on the top. Um, you pretty much have to have your standard Jordan almonds. Um, this is the brand that I really like. I believe I actually got them on Amazon. I got them once at the Duke store and then I think I got them on Amazon afterwards. They're very nice. They're very fresh. They, they, they're crunchy on the outside. I have gotten another brand. Um, <clears throat> I didn't like as much, but they were still good. If this is the one you can find, this is first. Um, these are a little larger. And I also found that this brand, um, I'm just going to call it Ilacara. I don't know exactly how to say it, but they, um, were much more uniform in size than the first. So um, that's why I prefer these. Then of course you need all kinds of bits and baubles, the dragees. I have all sorts of different sizes. <clears throat> I have gold and silver, um, more of a like kind of nickel color almost. Um, all kinds of things. I have. White, these are very pretty actually, the white beads. When you put these on top of the white confectionery sugar with as it like with some accent beads on top of it, they can be absolutely gorgeous. I was a little hesitant for this one at first, but um, I also like, which I wasn't sure, oh, I'm really running low, is uh, white sanding sugar. Actually, if you put that on top of the white confectionery sugar, it gives it a real shimmer and shine that's lovely. Um, these, I haven't used super often, but they're quite lovely, the large size um, dragees, and they can be used as accent pieces. Let me see if I can see what size these are. Point, these are, no, it's four ounces total. Oh, I can't see. Oh, I'm sorry, right in front of me, eight millimeter. <laughs> so those are the eight millimeter. These are, these I use along the sides, um, and these are the four millimeter, so these are half the size. Uh, again, and some of these are just Wilson products that you can get um, in any craft store. So super easy to get hold of. The, the white one is Wilton as well. Um, I have bought one from um, bakeries and cooking supply stores um, that are very nice. Just make sure they're, they're decently fresh. But I, I like these as well. These are just the silver ones. Um, you can also use all sorts of sanding sugars. I didn't use the black, <laughs> but this one actually had some beautiful gray and silver that were quite lovely in a winter one, uh, winter coat that I did. I use the green sometimes. The green is for, you can get in cake decorating. That's this one. This one's red. I haven't used this in a while. Uh, a lot of times I like to just stick with a white landscape, a white kind of color scheme, but again, depends on the mood, depends on the, the occasion, but this blue can be absolutely stunning. Again, this I just bought in the supermarket. It's just, um, these. I think all these I just bought in the supermarket, these three here but can be lovely, used sparingly, of course. And then, last but not least, I have my, um, my little tools. Fantastic set of tools that have allowed me to really make some intricate designs. If you drag these balls along the confectionery sugar, you can create rows where then you can put in your dragees and, and really they sit nicely. Here are little paintbrushes that I use to dust off the edges of the bowl when I need to. Um, use even a larger brush that, again, I use to dust off things. Um, they come in very handy. Too. Also, there's a tweezer in there which helps you to place um, your accent beads, balls, um, and very handy to have a tweezer. I also have some toothpicks. Sometimes I need to use those for different reasons. I have some stencils that I've made myself. Um, that I use on occasion, depending on, again, uh, what it's for exactly. So um, I think basically this time I'm gonna do a white confectionery sugar background with a cross of the Jordan almonds, and I believe um, some of the large bright silver, bright silver dragees, the eight millimeter, um, in the corners of the cross of the Jordan almonds, just for accent. Again, it's, a, it's an also Saturday, so there are gonna be many others. If it was for um, a funeral, of course, can be much more detailed um, and involved in the design. 
if it is for one person's memorial service, a three year or a one year, something like that, you can definitely go much more um, all out in your design. But this is basically what I think I'm going to do for tomorrow.